Gilead, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook Sherit that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up, because there had been no rain in the land. Praise God. Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for your word tonight. God, you said, oh God, that your word would not return unto you void. And so God, we're asking you, Lord God, let your word go forth tonight with the power of the Holy Ghost. In someone's heart, we pray in Jesus' name. Praise God. May I submit to someone tonight, praise God, the thought that the stillness of the season that we are in, praise God, and the stillness and and the quietness that we are in tonight is not something that we should take as a negative situation in our lives. Too often, praise God, when it seems like things aren't going our way, we begin to think that this season of inactivity, the season of drought, the season of stillness should, seems to be a way of God saying that nothing is happening in our lives. But I submit to you the, the thought tonight that the season of stillness, the season of quietness that is upon many of us tonight is not a season of inactivity. It's not a season of drought, but rather it's a season of hiddenness that is required to launch the people of God and prepare us for the challenges and the victories that are about to come. Unfortunately, the human mind has a tendency to believe that unless there is movement, unless there is sound, unless there is noise, unless there is a visible change, that nothing is happening in the lives of the believers of God. The human intellect makes a grave error, brethren, in coming to the conclusion that to be put away, praise God, to be hidden is a negative thing. We see a lack of movement as a lack of progress because as human beings we want to be progressive and even as we grow as children of God we want to be impactful we want to be uh, better we want to do things that are bigger uh, someone says that they want to move the needle to be counted as impactful people of God but brethren as people of God that desire to be pleasing to God we have to step praise God into opportunities that that God gives us, including being hidden by God. And I pray that somebody tonight, praise God, takes the word of God into their circumstance to realize that the, the moment that God took you out of where you were, it wasn't a demotion, praise God. It wasn't pulling you away from the blessings of God, but in order for God to prepare you to where you need to be, praise God, where, where God desires your purpose to be fully uh, expressed in your life, God had to hide you from some things that are going to be happening around you. We are to think as people of God that whenever we are chosen to be sent by God, that God cannot begin our season with a moment that is spent in God. Let, let, let me take that one more time to, to someone's spirit. Whenever we begin our, our walk with the Lord, whenever we are sent by God, many of us believe that we are sent and we have to explode into ministry, explode into relationships, explode into different avenues of life. But whenever God truly sends you, there is a process in the sending where God has to hide you and preserve you in order for you to fulfill that purpose that he has planted inside of you, the stillness of your situation 
And, I, and I'm saying this with conviction tonight because as I study the word of God, what weighed heavily on me are the ministers within the house of God that believe that they are not propelling forward in the grace of God. They feel that they are stagnant. They feel as if someone else seems to be getting the glory. Someone else seems to be getting the limelight. Someone else seems to be getting the pulpit. But God says, it's not that someone else is getting it. It's that you have been hidden for a season in order for God to pull you, praise God, into your divine purpose. The word of God that we read tonight, praise God, comes from 1 Kings chapter 17. And when you look at it, brethren, it speaks about Elijah the Tishbite. And this is the first moment that we hear about Elijah the prophet. And he begins his prophetical career on a high note, brethren. He enters into King Ahab's kingdom and he declares prophetically that there will be no rain and it is evident that God is with him. He is fearless in front of a king that is known to be merciless, a, a king that is known to have, praise God, a vicious behavior. But right after the declaration, the strong prophetic declaration, God speaks to him. And God says, it's now time for you to go and hide. What, what causes the confusion is that if I am sent, oh, praise God, if I am sent, why is there a need for separation? Why is there a need right now for me to be out of the limelight? Why is there a need for me not to be the one, praise God, who is in front because I am sent? What you have to recognize, saints of God, is that as a human being, we tend to want to put the eye before for God. And God is requiring us not just for ministry, praise God, but for our own growth as people of God to take the back seat, hallelujah, and allow God, praise the name of Jesus, and allow God to actually drive us right into our purpose. What does it mean to hide? Praise God. He tells the prophet, after the prophet has declared this strong prophetical word, he feels good about what he has said. He says, I want you to go and hide by the brook called Sheriff. He's hiding because hiding means, praise God, it's, it's a moment of preservation. Hiding means it's a moment of concealing. Hiding is a, a way of protecting something. And God knows what is about to happen. I, I hope you recognize as people of God that whenever your light begins to shine, that the devil recognizes something is happening. And so he will begin to set his darts after the children of God. He'll set the darts after your relationships, set the darts after your family family, set the darts after your employment. He will begin to set darts after the people of God. Once you begin to, to pray God to step out into the light of what God has called you to do. So there is a portion in the journey of someone who is following God where God begins to just hide us. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. God sends, he sends Elijah to the brook called Sherith. And when you begin to do biblical study, you recognize that Sherith praise God, means to, uh, it means to cut, it means to separate. God sent him in a place of separation, praise God. He sent him there, praise God, to cut off the world, cut off the distractions, cut off even the very fame that he may receive, cut off the attention that he may receive because God requires humility in the people of God. Even in your relationship, God requires humility. But I want to encourage somebody tonight that what seems like a cold season, what seems like you are pulled back, what seems like you are alone, what seems like no one else is there, what seems confusing, bless the name of God, is that God is able to preserve serve you while he's hiding you. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. The word of God tells us tonight, he told Elijah that I will, yes, I will provide for you while I'm hiding you. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. He says, I will send the raven. I will send, praise God, bread and flesh in the morning, and I'll send bread and flesh flesh in the evening, and there is going to be sustenance, uh, praise God, when everybody else thinks uh, that it seems like nothing is happening in your life, uh, I want somebody to recognize God is just feeding you in the middle of this blessed quietness, uh, God is feeding you in the middle of the stillness, uh, God is feeding your soul, he's sustaining you, he's building you up, praise God, because what is ahead of you, oh Holy Ghost, 
what is ahead of you you have to be able to sustain the anointing that requires praise God of it what is ahead of you you have to be able praise God to manage the glory that God is about to shed abroad hallelujah if you are not prepared for what God is going to do even the very anointing may crush you but I have heard the psalmist David said preserve me oh God mighty God hide me oh God almighty under your wings hallelujah under your feathers praise God almighty we are being hidden in a season of quietness I would to God that somebody would understand that once God hides you that praise God he will indeed preserve you for his purpose it is important praise God to know that God will provide for you by any means necessary praise God the ravens were considered ungodly creatures creatures praise God that you would not want to do anything with they were a symbol of death but even out of death even out of your enemy's mouth praise God as long as you sit down and wait on the Lord the word God the word of God says he'll make your enemies your very footstool so while you're there wondering what is going on I would to God somebody would wait on the Lord and be of good courage the word of God says he's gonna strengthen you praise God while you're sitting by the brook of Sherith this is the place where God cuts off some people this is the place where God separates you from some things in your life every December 31st you would see on WhatsApp and Facebook people post the, the post that says if you're not in my contacts by the next year year then you know you've been cut off brethren i want you to apply that praise god to the season that you are going through there are some people that god has got to cut off in order for you to go forward i know that you've heard it before but i'm telling somebody again this word has come for you to recognize that the season you are in it is hiddenness in god it requires you to be humble it requires you praise god to wait on the lord it, it requires you to obtain knowledge of god many christians have it backwards saints they're either running into the face of god wanting to tell god what to do especially in the ministry or they're running away from god in disobedience in several capacities but god strategically places elijah there he places him by the brook because he knows that some things are in Elijah and they've got to get cut off. Not because he was a prophet, not because she's a pastor's daughter, not because she's, she's a pastor's wife. Doesn't mean there aren't things that is required to be cut off. I would that, I would that someone would recognize we're all human saints and that God is going to process us in a way that the ministry can be perfected in the name of Jesus. Many of you right now who are on the line are called to work for God. In a time like this, you have displayed the ability, you have displayed the obedience, but in order for God to fulfill the depth and the volume of work that God has for you, he has to separate you unto himself. God begins to teach Elijah in this moment to trust him. Because every single day he has to wait on the raven. He begins to, he begins to teach him faith. He begins to teach him dependency because that's what God requires of us as children of God. When God separates us, he's hiding us not just from dangers, but he's also, praise God, catering to us. He's cultivating us because he wants you to be ready for that, for that next challenge, for that next ministry that he's calling you to. Why does God allow us to start and then ask us to stop? And it doesn't make any sense that the reality is that some of us brethren need to have the assurance that God has called us. And once we receive the assurance that God has called us, God pulls us back into hiding to understand our assignment. I'll say it again. Many of us wonder why we start and why God then stops us and places us into hiding. The reality is that some of us need to see the assurance of God, that God is with us, but then God pulls us back into hiding so we can understand our assignment. I challenge you tonight to praise God. Do not resist the season of hiddenness that God has placed you in. Many of us have misinterpreted the season as one that we are, we are not valued. We, we feel that, praise God, we, we are not being called to be the voice that is heard. One where it seems like our gifting is being neglected. 
distracted, one where it seems like someone else keep getting the accolades and the recognition. It seems, praise God, that someone else is in the pulpit, but you have got to understand your calling. And you've got to understand that there is greater, praise God, that is before you. And you've got to be able to handle greater. When God is hiding us and he's cutting things away from us. God has to cut away some things, brethren, that will hinder you in the next season. There are some things, praise God, when you're traveling through an airport. I don't know about you, but when you're, when you're traveling, ladies, we pack heavy. I, I, I know that there's some ladies who can agree with me. We pack heavy. And when you get to the counter and they put the, 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 the suitcase on the counter, you know that 50 pounds is, is what is allowed. But you know you go up there knowing it's 57. And you pray to God that somehow the lady or the man at the counter allows you to travel with the 57 pounds. But brethren, if every single person on the plane had 57 pounds, the plane would be unbalanced. Just like the ministry, there's got to be some cutting off, some emptying out, some letting go because there has to be a certain weight. You have two talents. I have one talent. He has five talents. We have to cut it off the way it has to be cut off in order for the church, the local church, to balance itself when it's being, pray God, effective in ministry. So come on, ladies, what do we do? We bend down at our suitcases and we begin to take out what we think we don't need. In fact, some of us have even thrown away things in the airport. We count them not necessary to travel. Sometimes it's hard to let go of it. But you know in order for you to make this flight, you have got to be at 50 pounds. I pray that somebody recognizes that the way to go to heaven it is a straight street. There's some things that you cannot carry with you. So if you desire God to keep you, if you desire God to pull you through, praise God Almighty, lay aside every weight that would so easily be set us and I'll run this race, praise God, with patience. And you need that patience, brethren, while you are waiting, praise God, in God. I would to God somebody would understand that quietness in God is a blessed thing. God is hiding somebody tonight. Someone is misfocused. Someone has figured out that maybe they're not valued. I, I, I'm here to let somebody know that's not the case. God is hiding you. I, I, I wish that you would recognize God is preserving you because something is coming that he needs you for. God is asking you just to trust him. A season of inactivity with man doesn't speak to the ability of God. I heard the Bible tell me about Martha and Mary. As Mary sat at the feet of Jesus, he said, praise God, that Mary chose a better path. Why? Because God requires you to put down everything. God requires your attention. God requires a different level of commitment. We submit, praise God, to the keeping care of God, that there must be a level of protection and provision and declaration over our lives that the enemy cannot touch us no matter how hard he tries. I heard the songwriter speak the lyrics, all to be kept by Jesus, kept by the power of God, kept from the world unspotted, treading where Jesus trod, all to be kept by Jesus. Lord, at thy feet I fall. I would nothing, nothing, nothing. Thou shalt be my all in all. All to be kept by Jesus. Hallelujah. All to be kept for Jesus. Serve as he shall choose, kept for the master's pleasure, kept for the master's use, all to be kept by Jesus, kept from the world apart, lowly in mind and spirit, gentle and pure in heart, all to be kept for Jesus. Hallelujah. God is hiding me. He's hiding you. I, I submit to the word that, praise God, this is supposed to be comforting for somebody. A comforting thought to somebody tonight. That although it may feel like you have been deserted in a place, I want you to assure you you are in the hands of God. Uh, the, 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 the analogy that came to my mind, praise God, was the analogy of the butterfly. We love to see the beauty and the glory of the now. But we fail to remember that it too had to go through a season of stillness. 
It takes up to 21 days for that tightly wrapped cocoon to break forward and become a butterfly. But yet while it is constrained, it is being sustained and nourished. And I hear the word of God say to be still and know that I am God. And, and the butterfly continues to grow. And eventually, through the process of metamorphosis, it breaks forth into, in, into its next stage. It has to be hidden for a while. It has to be still for a while. There could be storms that are blazing around the butterfly, but as long as it holds on, praise God, the season of coming forward will be there as long as you hold on in your season of stillness. To be hidden, praise God, requires humility. It requires obedience. It requires trusting in God. When you're hidden by God, it means that there are certain people that no matter how hard they try, they won't see you. We need to stop trying to be seen and heard by certain people. We're not here to please man. We're here to please God. And so God would allow certain people's eyes to be blinded. You go under the radar. They won't even listen to you. They won't hear you. They won't call you to preach. They won't call you to speak. They won't call you to do anything because God is allowing you to go under the radar because the moment that you come up on the radar, praise God, you are standing there as a stalwart for God. The Bible gives me, praise God, examples in the word of God where God hides his people. And when he hides his people, it's to preserve them for purpose. And if you remember tonight, I said God is hiding you and he's preserving you. Despite your circumstance, he's preserving you. Praise God for purpose that is coming. The first one is Joseph. The Bible tells me that Joseph, praise God, he was marked by his dreams to be a great man of God. But because of the environment that he was in, praise God, he was sentenced to death by his very brethren. There are some people who are around us who should love us, brethren. There are people who are around us who should care for us. There's people who are around us who should think, praise God, good of us. But because of the gifting of God in us, because of how they see our trajectory of life moving forward they are willing to kill us with the tongue the word of god says there is death and there is life in the power of the tongue and so they will look to you and try to demonize you and try to bring you down but all to be kept by jesus praise god the word of god tells me that joseph praise god almighty was thrown into a pit and god allowed that pit experience he allowed the hiddenness of joseph to happen because once Joseph came forward, he went to the pit, he went to the prison, but while he was waiting, while he was waiting, he was learning, and the time came forward that the same gift that they put you down for, oh God, I know I'm talking to somebody, the same gift that they put you down for is the same gift that's going to take them out of the situation that they are in. And so Joseph begins to reveal to King Pharaoh that he has given the interpretation of the dreams and it better come on when God keeps you purpose is on your life all you have to do is wait on the Lord and so the same gift that Joseph had praise God it had a massive impact not on the scale of, of the household not on the scale of even the kingdom but on the he had a regional impact it had an impact across countries why because he was willing to stay hidden in God the word of God tells me about King David. King David, praise God, he was anointed to be king around the age of 15 years old. And it took 15 plus years for him to actually get seated as the actual king of Israel. And while he was there, what happened? The Bible tells us he was hiding in caves, running for his life. The enemy was after him, but yet he's one of the most famous kings in the Bible and one of the famous kings from the Jewish people today. Why? Why is David such an impactful person? Because while he was hidden, praise God, he was trusting Jesus. I want you to understand your experience. Praise God, it's building you for greater. The Bible tells me, praise God, about another man. His name is Moses. And Moses, praise God, begins with a rocky start. We know that. He gets shipped down in a little basket down the river. And he gets taken up by the house of Pharaoh. Why do I include Moses in this? Because Moses was destined for something. But God had to hide Moses for a season. You see, there are some people, praise God, who are on the line tonight that we're living the life of Moses. We have, we have somehow fallen into some good stuff. 
and the good stuff is going to mess up our intellect. Some good stuff is going to mess up our view. Some good stuff is going to mess up the way that we actually walk inside the plan of God. And so God has to allow some good stuff to leave you. He was eating well. He was the prince of Egypt. He could marry whoever he wants. He could have the kingdom. Brethren, he was in a good circumstance, but God knows that some things that look good to man, it is not good in the eyes of God. And so God allowed circumstances to happen in the life of Moses. And Moses had to run. Sometimes when you're running, brethren, it seems that you're running away from something. But can I encourage somebody? You're not running away, praise God. You're running towards Jesus. Oh, praise the name of Jesus. You're not running from something. You're running to someone, praise God, to be hidden in God. And Moses was there for 40 years. Praise God. It took 40 years of hiding him to prepare him for the purpose that God had in his life. No matter how long it takes, stay hidden in God until God reveals himself, praise God, inside of you and around you. The next person I want to encourage somebody with is Jacob. The Bible tells me that Jacob was on his way back to see Esau, his brother, and he was afraid of what his brother would do and how he would accept him. But something dropped into the mind of Jacob. He said, if I let those who are with me go before me, then I can spend some time alone with God. And maybe if I spend some time alone with God, something can happen. I would to God, somebody would take the attitude of Jacob. Send some things ahead of you. Let some things go and let God begin to deal with you on a one-to-one basis. And so Jacob sat there and began to wrestle with the man. Go back to Genesis, praise God. And what does the word of God tell us? He wrestles with him and the very man says to him, what is your name? Why would God, we know that the, the interpretation that he was wrestling with God. And it says, praise God, he asked him what was his name. Praise God, his name was Jacob. It meant deceiver. It meant thief. It meant he was a crook. But my God, he says, what is your name? Why did he have to say his name? Because Jacob had to recognize where he was. Jacob had to recognize who he was. And as soon as Jacob recognized that, my God Almighty, the Lord God Almighty, allowed the man to say unto him, no more shall your name be Jacob. No more shall you, praise God, be Jacob. Your name shall be Israel. Why did God change him? Because he was willing to be alone. He was willing to give everything over to God. He was willing to put God before, praise God Almighty, he made another step. I want to stop somebody in the name of the Lord tonight. I want to stop somebody in the name of the Lord tonight, whoever you are, whether you're in Florida, whether you're in New Jersey, whether you're in Connecticut, whether you're in Toronto, Canada, wherever you may be tonight, I want to stop somebody to you to realize, praise God, some things have got to go and you have got to be alone with God. That is the only way that there's going to be change that happens in your life. There are days I like to be, thank you, Jesus, all alone with Christ, my Lord, not just to tell him my troubles, but for God to teach me, for God to love me, to teach me what true love looks like. I would to God a young woman on the line today would recognize the value that God has in her, praise God, for you to wait on the Lord, praise God. Wait on the Lord, my God Almighty. The last person I want to bring to you, you know him very well, his name is Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus was destined for the cross from the time that he was born. The word of God declares that he shall save his people from their sins. But shortly after being born, the enemy wanted to kill him. Shortly after you start, the enemy wants to break you down. Soon as something good happens, the enemy rises up. But I hear the word of God say when the enemy rises up, that God Almighty will lift up a standard. The enemy has a track record, brethren. The enemy has a track record to kill anything or anyone that can provide hope. As long as God has his hand on you and you can speak life into someone, the enemy is going to try to kill you. He's seeking who he can devour. But God says, I come and you might have life. I come that you might have life and that you may have it more abundantly. And that life, praise God, that God wants to preserve. It, it may mean a life without friends. It may mean a life without a husband. It may mean a life without a wife. 
It may mean a life without going into the pulpit. Because there's some persons running for the pulpit. And God is holding you back. Because your life needs to be preserved. God says, I come that you might have life. That you might have it more abundantly. And I, I, I hear the, the song that I want my life to be hidden in Christ, in God. To bring forth my purpose. I, I pray that God will hide my life. And hide my soul. And cover me there. Praise God. I'd rather to fall in the hands of God. Than to fall in the hands of man. So I will, if God has to hide me. Let God hide me. Word of God tells us that when, when Jesus was born, that, that, that Joseph received a dream and said he needs to run into Egypt. And so the Bible tells us that Jesus was there for two years. He was out in the desert, but God kept him, brethren. He was with his family, but God kept him. And he sat there with his family and lived there. And the next time we hear about Jesus, he was 12 years old. And what do we know very well? That he began to do what? Speak with the men that were eloquent inside the synagogue. And it tells me that while between the ages of 2 to 12, that he was receiving instruction. Oh God, he was getting knowledge. Luke chapter 2 verse 52 says, praise God, that he was acquiring wisdom while he waited. I, I want someone to have the appetite to be hidden by God. Because it's when you're hidden that God begins to impart into you. It's when God begins to pour into you. I, I don't have to be recognized. I, I don't have to be, be, praise God, up there on the altar. I don't have to do all these things. I would to God someone who have the attitude, praise God, to not allow fame and the flesh to get in there. Where Hide me, O oh thou great Jehovah. I know it says guide me, but I'm saying hide me. The Bible tells us that, praise God, the, the second time we hear about Jesus, he's 12 years old. But for 18 years, brethren, nothing is recorded. We then hear about Jesus coming on the scene at the age of 30. And what's so special about the age of 30 is that the word of God tells us in Numbers chapter 4 and verse 3 that once you are a part of the priesthood, that at the age of 30 is when you can begin ministry. Imagine if we told some of our young people that you can't start until, you, until the age of 30. What does that represent? It means that there's a certain time where you step into your role because you've got to know how to wait. You've got to know how to stay on the wings. You have to know how to support. You have to know what the structure is first. You got to know the, the, the inside and the outside before you go out and preach we've got to allow God to hide us can, can I encourage somebody that in hiding God heals us there's some broken hearts there's some messed up mentalities that are out there there's, there's some I, I, I would easily honestly say the word screwed up mentalities let me say it that are, that are falling away that their, your mental state is just so is, is so fragile how can man help you the only one can be and so it takes a moment of silence it takes a hiddenness in god for god to pour into you the healing virtue that he promised us at calvary so the word of god tells us that at the age of 30 jesus christ starts his ministry and as soon as he starts his ministry he has impact he calls the disciples and they come oh bless the name of jesus he has an impact on the nation immediately he begins to stir up the, the political system immediately why because when he stepped on the scene he stepped in with power and authority and that is what the, that is what being hidden by god does for you when you open your mouth brethren you will be impactful when you open your mouth whatever you say will come to pass when you open your mouth praise god people demon, demons will tremble why because you have to know how to be hidden in god until god is ready to reveal you let us let us want to be impactful christians but accept our season of hiddenness god brethren i'm telling you tonight they, they, this word weighed heavily on my heart because sometimes the hiding, it, it is the pit. Sometimes the hiding is the prison. Sometimes the hiding is the cave. Sometimes the hiding is a lonely place. And God wants to get you alone. In, in a world that is so connected, God wants you to disconnect. <laughs> My God, growing in the, although we're connected tonight through this wonderful medium, there, there are sometimes, God wants you to disconnect. Some has one, two, three phones. My good God Almighty, we need to disconnect so God can just pour into us. 
My God, God wants you to be able to step into your purpose with, with an authority, but only when you have accepted that the silence in your life is not, ne not neglect. It's a call to be hidden in God. Don't fight to be seen. Hiding keeps you from being exposed to certain things. Hiding, hiding allows you, praise God Almighty, to not be tainted by certain things. Things that can damage you, that can mess up your integrity as a child of God. I'm here to encourage somebody that feels that they're left alone. And when, when this word dropped into my spirit, I just felt like someone felt they weren't being valued. Someone felt like as if no, the, the persons who they are looking to, to acknowledge them, they're not receiving it. And so you think that you're just nothing. But God dropped it into my soul to let you know that you're not alone. Oh, praise God. You're not abandoned. People cannot understand what's happening in your life. Even you yourself can't understand what's happening in your life. Maybe you stepped out of the will of God and you're trying to figure out how to get back in and the way that you think is, it is to get back in is not the way God wants you to. The church you may want to go back to, I don't know who I'm speaking to on the line tonight, it's not the one that God wants you to go back to. So you got to ask God, search me, oh God. Know my heart. Try me and see if there be any wicked ways in me. Cleanse me. But how can God do that when you aren't being kept by him? I'm here to encourage somebody. It seems like you're abandoned. And, and it seems like you're alone. And, and in the eyes of others, maybe things are going well. Maybe things could have worked out. And, and, and I will say this before I close. And those who know me know that I rarely do this, but I, I have to speak into somebody's relationship. Your, your season of being alone in your relationship is preparing you to be alone. There, there, there are, I know that as, as a church, we, we want to always encourage the healing of relationships, but there are some relationships that God is drawing you out of to preserve you. Thank you, Jesus. God is drawing you out of it to preserve you. Why are you running back into it? We, we need to get on board with the plan of God, saints. God is pulling you out of something and you're pulling back into it. That is called a tug of war. You're not fighting with man. You're fighting with God. And I would to God that the people who are encouraging you would pray before they open their mouth and speak into your life. There are some relationships that God is pulling you out of. Stay out of it and stay hidden in God. The healing that you need is in God. So hide me, God. Cover me, God. Uh, the, the, when, when, when no one's recognizing me, it's okay, Lord. When no one wants to call your name, it's okay, Lord. When you walk into church and, and if, if it's always the same person leading service, it's okay, Lord. The devil is separating and messing up your purpose by wanting your flesh to be satisfied, by being acknowledged and being called upon. Listen to me, people of God. I don't know you, you don't know me, but I'm going to tell you something. The devil will use it to break things up. I don't care if you have doctor in front of your name. I don't care if they want to call you all manner of things. Listen to me, saints. Every one of us on here is a child of God, and God told the prophets of all people, go hide. Hide me, God. Hide me in the cliff of the rock. Cover me there with your hands. Can I say one thing about that cliff of the rock? It was the same cliff of rock that Moses saw the backside of God. Oh, hallelujah. It is in those places. It's in those moments where God reveals himself to you. I encourage somebody tonight. The circumstance you are in may be lonely. But when it comes to God, that loneliness is for a reason. Stay hidden in God. May I remind someone of the words I started off by saying tonight, 
that God has hidden you to preserve you and to preserve you for his purpose. And even if you're out of the will of God tonight, this experience of your way back to him will allow your purpose to be more powerful. Some preachers won't tell you that. But somebody has to be able to say, I was fallen and God brought me back. Somebody has to be able to say, I was in sin and God brought me, brought me back. Somebody has to be able to say, yes, it was seven times, but God has set me free. God, I thank you for your words tonight. Grace, by the way, God bless you. Bishop Peer, Pastor Peer, Evangelist Peer, God bless you. Faith house, God bless you. Stay hidden in God. That's where you're going to see the glory of God. That's where God will pour into you. That's where you will feel, praise God, the power of God. And that's where God, praise God, will reveal his purpose for you. You may know your calling, but do you understand your assignment? May God bless you tonight. May God bless you tonight. Praise God. If you need prayer, praise God tonight. Just start putting your name in the chat, brethren. And I hand this service back over, praise God, to Evangelist Caleb Peart, praise God. And if you need prayer, just put your name in the chat. And we can pray for you before we go. In Jesus' name, God bless you. God bless you, Evangelist. God bless you, God bless you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God, what a word from God tonight. Just a reminder of the things that he said to us this morning. Hallelujah. We give God thanks for his handmaiden. Ha. And even in this moment, we just stretch our hands forth. We say, God, in the name of Jesus, your daughter, Lord God, that has sat at your feet and has listened for your voice, God, who has been obedient to your call, my God, I pray that you will continue to strengthen her. God, continue to whisper in her ears, continue to hide her.